Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, I'm bringing you guys my Kenny Galladay player profile for fantasy football in 2020. We're going to be talking about Kenny Galladay's stats from last year, what I think went wrong, what went right for Kenny Galladay, and how I feel about him going into the 2020 fantasy football season. If you guys at any point end up enjoying this video, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. It's free, and I produce content every single day to help you guys win your 2020 fantasy football championship. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Kenny Galladay, player profile. Actually, if you guys want to see more player profiles, I have them on a couple players, Josh Jacobs, Cam Newton, and Austin Eckler. They're also on a playlist on my channel, which this video is in called Player Profiles for Fantasy Football in 2020. So let's get right into it. Kenny Galladay, player profiles. So first here, we're going to be looking at his workout metrics and his overall metrics as a guy, his fucking build. So FFPC ADP for 2020 is 32.46. FFPC is high stakes. Fantasy leagues are played on that website, 100 plus dollar leagues. ADP is average draft position. So the 32nd player off the board in those leagues. Detroit Lions wide receiver Kenny Galladay is obviously 6'4", 218 pounds, 26.7 years old. His workout metrics go as follows. 67th percentile 40-yard dash with a 4.50 92nd percentile speed score, 45th percentile burst score, 60th percentile agility score, 82nd percentile catch radius. So what do you want to basically gauge from the workout metrics is I don't put too much of a of hype into the workout per metrics because some guys they're very good their workout metrics look atrocious some guys are awful and they look like a goddamn freak athlete on their 98th percentile on everything and they're garbage so you don't really have to buy too much into it it just kind of tells you maybe a bit how fast the guy is but that doesn't necessarily make the guy a good player so Kenny Galladay last season in Detroit in 2019 finished as wide receiver number nine now, that wide receiver number nine wasn't just because he played 16 games. He actually played very consistent throughout all of the games. 15.5 PPR points per game, ranking 12th at the wide receiver in the points per game category. So he still would have been a top 12 wide receiver regardless. Now, it's interesting when you're looking at his numbers because he had 116 targets, which is 7.2 per game, ranking 21st at wide receiver. 65 receptions, 4.1 per game, ranking 29th at wide receiver. But with those reception total, he still managed to get 1,190 receiving yards 74.4 per game ranking sixth at the wide receiver position so even if he wasn't getting an astronomical number of targets the guy was still going absolutely fucking beast mode on the defenses he had 11 total touchdowns ranking first at wide receiver just with 65 receptions and he had eight total red zone receptions 18th amongst wide receivers and what that tells me is that Kenny Galladay is a guy that you can trust deep down the field and Kenny Galladay had this type of season that is a very good wide receiver season with two quarterbacks one named Matty Snap back Matthew Stafford who you is probably one of the most criminally underrated quarterbacks in the NFL the guy's fucking amazing but he's on the Detroit Lions so pe most people probably just assume he fucking sucks because that team couldn't win a playoff game if you paid him you could probably hold Barry Sanders hostage and say you're gonna blow his brains out if Stafford can't make the playoffs and the Lions will still miss the playoffs by seven games so I I think that's why he gets a bit of the hate but the other half of the season was with David Blau like who the fuck is that guy I'm being completely honest with you I had no idea who he was until he stepped in there, and he played decent, and Kenny Galladay still played good with him, but I think that tells more about Kenny Galladay than it does about Ke uh, David Blau. It tells you that Kenny Galladay can do it with garbage quarterbacks and pretty good quarterbacks, great quarterbacks in the NFL, so that gives me a lot of confidence in Kenny Galladay going into 2020, especially on the pace that Matthew Stafford was on last year, looking like the best Matt Stafford we've ever seen play in the NFL, so Kenny Galladay, very efficient wide receiver last season. The most important stat to note out of all of these is actually his worst stat, which is a 75.1% catchable target rate, 71st at wide receiver. So the number probably went hella down, hit the floor, went all the way down to the floor after Stafford got hurt. Then it became kind of shit because David Blau was throwing it all over the place. And Sachs man, Kenny G, couldn't really go get to it. So he had a 71st uh, in, at wide receiver catchable target rate. But even with that, 18.3 yards per reception. The guy was beast mode. He was going deep down the field, catching the ball. Fourth at wide receiver, 10.3 yards per target. Sixth at wide receiver. So he's taking the yards per target. He's going 10 yards down the field, and he's taking that eight additional yards. 54.2% contested catch rate. Seventh at wide receiver. If anyone is even on this guy's ass, he's mossing them, and he's making them look silly. If you guys have enjoyed the video thus far, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. So, as we continue to go on, this is Galladay's stats without Matthew Stafford. The in-split is with Matthew Stafford in the game. If you're watching the video, if you're listening to it on podcast, obviously can't see it. And then out of split is games played without Matthew Stafford at the quarterback position. Every single statistic on the board 
was higher with Matthew Stafford in the game. So he played eight games with, eight games without. So with Matthew Stafford, he averaged 15.44 PPR points per game, or half PPR points per game, versus 11.75 without. So that's a decent increase. 17.62 PPR points with Stafford versus 13.62 without. Again, a good increase. 7.75 targets with Stafford versus 6.75 without. So he's averaging one more target every game with Stafford versus without. And that could be a very big deal when it comes to scoring fantasy football points. 3.75 receiving or receptions per game without Matthew Stafford versus 4.38 without. What I found very notable was his touchdown rate increasing from 0.88 per game uh, or from 0.5 per game without Matthew Stafford to 0.88 with Matthew Stafford and his receiving yards were 80 per game versus 68.75 without. So clearly this is going to tell you that if Matthew Stafford can stay healthy in 2020, he is going to have an awesome year now. To understand Stafford kind of injury history. Not a guy known to get hurt. Actually, in 2018, he ended up suffering a back injury, but the guy's an alpha male. He played all 16 games, but then last year, he got hurt. They're fucking out of the playoffs by a mile, but Stafford's on fire, but he's like, I don't want to screw my back up for the rest of my life. I don't want to have to use a goddamn walker just to go piss every morning when I'm 40 years old. So he decided, you know what? Let me just sit out the rest of the time. I assume the doctors told him to fucking sit out the rest of the time. He's out for the season. And now he's coming back. He should be good to go. Should be nice and healthy. So what that tells me is that Stafford is a guy. He's an alpha male. He's a great quarterback. And I should expect similar production from last year to the 2020 season. So now we're going to talk about Galladay with and without Marvin Jones. Now, some people might think in their head, hey, Marvin Jones is going to hurt Kenny Galladay because in my head, and I still believe this, Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones, it's not one and two. It's 1A and 1B, two immensely talented wide receivers in the NFL on the exact same team. But, 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 Kenny Galladay really had a drop off when Matt, uh, Marvin Jones was not playing. Now, you could attribute this to, hey, the majority of the games were played when Marvin Jones wasn't healthy with David Blau. But I would say that's kind of a false narrative, too, because he played one game with Stafford when Marvin Jones was gone and then won two games with David Blau. So I'd say it kind of evens out a little bit there. So I think with Marvin Jones being healthy, Galladay is obviously going to get the benefit. He's going to be a benefactor of that. But at the same time, we know Marvin Jones. This motherfucker plays like 12, 13 games every year. He'll miss a couple of games every single year. So I wouldn't pencil him in for 16 games, but I do like Marvin Jones as well. But Kenny Galladay, I think, just plays worse when Jones is out. So you got to hope that Jones can stay healthy. So looking at the Lions offseason additions plus their offensive line, I think this is something that's very key for understanding a team is how good their offensive line is. So last year, the Detroit Lions offensive line finished 11th in O-line ranking via Pro Football Focus. This season, they are ranked 16th at the O-line position. So there's 32 teams in the NFL. They're right smack in the middle. They're just an average team, just like the Dallas fucking Cowboys. They have an average offensive line. And I think that doesn't really hurt or obviously take away from Kenny Galladay because he should be fine as long as Matthew Stafford doesn't get his back broken. If they were ranked like 30th, I probably would ship myself and stay away from Kenny G. So the 2020 NFL Draft, they bring in running back DeAndre Swift in the second round out of Georgia. Obviously a guy who's a great running back can also get a lot of pat work out of the backfield catching passes, which is good because now the defense fears three guys instead of just two, because obviously Karen John- Karrion Johnson is actually a pretty talented running back, but I just believe when, you know, you're not looking for Karrion to get a zillion dump-offs during the game, whereas DeAndre Swift might be getting some design plays. He's kind of built like one of those Kamara type of running backs. And in round five, they had Quentin Cephas, or Quentin Cephas, wide receiver of Wisconsin. I didn't really think that was too important, but I figure I would include it since it's another wide receiver, but that will not hurt Kenny Galladay at all. Now, the final verdict for me is going to be to draft Kenny Galladay. I really believe Kenny Galladay is going to be a top 12, if not top 10 wide receiver finisher in 2020. I think this offense is set up for success around Kenny Galladay. Snapback, obviously still there. Marvin Jones, then they bring in DeAndre Swift. I think this offense is going to be high flying. They're not a team that's really known to run the rock all too much, which is obviously going to help out Stafford. Their defense is fucking atrocious, so they're going to have to pass the goddamn ball. You want to know who's going to be catching the ball when they have to pass it? Kenny Galladay, and I just think Kenny Galladay steps an even bigger step up from last year. Just having a, like I talked about earlier, just an overall better 
targets come in his way. Even if he still only gets the same amount of targets as last year, maybe he goes from 60-ish receptions to 80-ish, 90-ish receptions, and that's really going to be boosting Kenny Galladay's point total come the end of the season. While it is impossible to predict touchdown total, I think Kenny Galladay is still a guy that, while I'm not going to project 11 touchdowns, I think could be around that 8 mark in 2020. And with all of that stuff added up, you're getting an absolute steal at the wide receiver position in Kenny Galladay. To me, he should be a second-round pick, but he doesn't really go there. He's more of a third or fourth round pick and there to me that is extreme value and I find it very hard to not click the draft button on Kenny Galladay at that value I think this Lions team has to if this Lions team isn't better you also have to understand this if they're not better Matt Patricia pencil in the year motherfucker is going to get fired he is going to get fired and that's going to look very embarrassing for the Bill Belichick coaching tree so I don't think that ends up happening and I think that we see Matthew Stafford return back to MVP pace form that team literally beat the Chiefs I believe last year and if they didn't it was pretty fucking close that was a good game I seem to remember on red zone so I think we're going to see a new not even a new and improved Kenny Galladay just an improved Kenny Galladay the same motherfucker just more points same shit different day thank you guys all for watching this video if you ended up enjoying please make sure to click that subscribe button down below or it should be maybe on your screen right now there's gonna be some videos on your screen as well please click out on one of those if you enjoyed this video you will enjoy all the fucking videos they're all pretty similar not necessarily similar because the content's different but i'm talking the same way i'm having a fun time and i hope you guys had a great time i hope you guys have a great rest of your day and i hope that the rest of your week is awesome i love each and every single one of you motherfuckers i really do it means everything to me the amount of support i see on my videos in the comment section i read every comment i try to reply to all of them i really do love all you guys and i can't wait to see you guys tomorrow in another video stay safe guys i love you all goodbye